I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host Bishop Earl and I appreciate, appreciate you spending some time with us. A couple of months ago I had the opportunity to interview Richard Dutcher. It was our episode 166 I think and I had so many people write to me, uh, had questions and I even felt at the time, I think I even said in the interview that I felt like this was running short and there was much more to cover. Uh, and so I've invited Richard Dutcher back. He's considered the father of Mormon cinema. He, in, two, in the year 2000, he, he produced and directed, uh, starred in, uh, acted in, and wrote, which one did I miss? <laughs> God's Army. I'm sure many of you are familiar with that. And so uh, I'm really pleased to have Richard come back and share more of your story, and I think we're going to be able to spend two more sessions on this so well it's great to be back thanks for coming and yeah, it's starting to feel like home yeah so. well like I said there were so many that had responses uh, we mm -hmm. didn't cover much of your family we mm -hmm. didn't cover much of your Christian walk uh, mm -hmm. we didn't cover the movies much so there really is a lot to so we've cover. got a lot to talk about yeah, yeah. and uh, and rather than have me kind of repeat what we talked about and also for maybe people who are new to this this particular episode I thought mm -hmm. maybe if you'd take just a second or a couple of minutes and kind of restate maybe the beginnings of your uh, life. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, we covered that pretty well. In fact, I think that's why we ran out of time was because yeah. we spent a little time. So I think, you know, anyone who's interested in uh, some of those formative things, I think. Uh, well, they are interesting because they develop, they give us a perspective right. of where right. you've come from and why right. you're where you're at. So. Right. We covered the uh, you know childhood uh, Pentecostal and Baptist. Yeah. Um, I like the thing that came out about Pentecostals couldn't go to movies. Right. And so right. Uh, here, here you become a movie director. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's there's, in there's, movies. That's, that's interesting. an interesting twist. Yeah. And um, and then my mother marrying a Mormon man when I was seven, and then uh, being baptized and. Uh, yeah. We covered all of that, BYU years and, and Well, that. we got you through your early years, and you rebelled right. a little bit. Oh, you yeah, were always study, so. studious. Yeah. You always liked to yeah. read. Yeah. Ended up going on a mission right. to Veracruz. Veracruz, Mexico. Veracruz, Mexico. Right. That was one question that yeah. came up. But where did you go? Yeah, so I was in Veracruz and Oaxaca and just southern Mexico, right where it starts to curve. And during that little p portion of it, you mentioned something about a jail time that you spent, and we <laughs> glossed right over that. So tell right. us a little yeah, bit about that. Yeah, it was quite an adventure. And I realized, I'd forgotten this, but I had a friend, uh, it happened on my birthday. It was my um, 20th birthday yeah. that I was, uh, I was in the city of Oaxaca, and I'd only been in the mission field for a month, maybe maybe a little more. And walking down the street one day in Oaxaca, right downtown, with my um, Mexican companion, and suddenly a man just came up and pulled his gun and said, "Come with me." And so oh my I did, of course. And you were my alone? companion, oh, you, my companion's yeah. with me, and of yeah. course, and so we. And he took me immediately to to the jail and made my companion go away because he wasn't being arrested and and then took me in and booked me and did the whole thing and, um and and the the 
the reason I was arrested was because I was a missionary. I, there's, there's a law in Mexico that you can't be a foreign-born minister. If you're going to be a minister of religion in Mexico, you have to be a Mexican citizen. Oh. Uh, and I, of course, didn't know this. I Your just, companion was Mexican? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's okay. why he wasn't arrested. Sure, too. okay. Um, and so I was thrown in jail, and uh, it was everything you would expect a Mexican jail to be. I, can't, I don't even want to go into yeah. the description because... Yeah because uh, I don't want viewers to turn off the, <laughs> the show. But it was about 12 of us stuck in a big concrete room mm -hmm. with a cold night, uh, the first night, very cold, one toilet that didn't work in the corner. Oh, boy. Um, and, uh, <laughs> but but the, the fun part about it was, was everyone was so... Um, and I was being led around at gunpoint, you know, and everyone... Everyone was so horrified by this, and I was enjoying the experience. <laughs> to me, it was like, well, I'd rather Something be doing this new. than tracting, you know, <laughs> the knocking on doors. I mean, heaven's sakes, I'm a, yeah. I'm a, uh, I'm being imprisoned for the the gospel's sake. You That's know, it's right. like I was feeling like, like the apostle Paul, and it was like, <laughs> this is awesome. After the first night, it wasn't so awesome. <laughs> How long were you there? Well, I was there, I think it was the second day that I was um, that I was taken out and sent to Mexico City where arrangements were made to release me and, and let me um, go back. Um, as soon, of course, as soon as I was thrown in jail, the mission president, mission president knew who then went up the channels and then, and then they went down the channels into the Mexican channels and of course the church has a deal you know, that they'll look the other way on the, the law to let the... Missionary, white missionaries. missionaries uh, right. Oh, interesting. And I, you know, which I thought, I, I thought that was strange. It was like, so this is illegal, what we're doing? And, yeah. But, oh. Okay, well. And then I was sent back. You know, they made the, they slapped whatever hands needed to be slapped or paid whoever needed to be paid. And I was sent back into a tiny village, remote village, Mm -hmm. where I was allowed to be a missionary, as long as I didn't wear my name tag. Really? And, well, this was and, true then of all Caucasian missionaries. Right, right. Oh, interesting. But, but that's that story, and it, it, was, it was actually... Uh, um, oh, well, the funny part was, of course, the other inmates didn't... They, they, didn't, they asked me what I was in for, and I was, I, I'm a missionary, and they said, a missionary who did what, you know? <laughs> yeah. And they were all, you know, we had a rapist and some Ooh. burglars and, and, you know, drunks, and it was yeah. just... And it was interesting because they were very suspicious of me until, of course, when the members all heard that I was in jail, they started to bring food. And I had started to fast as soon as I went in. I thought that was the appropriate thing to do. Yeah. And so when they would bring food, I would just share it with the other inmates. And so I was, suddenly became the most very, popular, very popular person. <laughs> person in the jail. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, there was no, and had a man teach me how to sleep because there were no blankets or pillows. And so he taught me how to use some newspapers that had been brought. Mm -hmm. How to insulate it top and bottom, yeah. just so you know. Um, and then I used the Book of Mormon for my pillow, and it was quite an experience. It was wow. It was, okay, well that uh, uh, tells us what the uh, jail experience was. That's <laughs> that's fascinating. Well, I, I was surprised they didn't have those kinks worked out by now, but yeah. anyway, well, that was a while ago. Yeah. Maybe. So you come home and uh, you start at BYU. You have a leadership scholarship, as I recall, and you ended up right. in films, though. Right. Had you always mm -hmm. wanted to be a director, a writer? Absolutely, yeah. As, as I mentioned in the other show, when I was seven years old, I saw my first film, John Wayne and the Cowboys, and it was immediate. Was it was time. like I was hooked. You and, just knew that's what you... And I didn't know what it was, really. I didn't know how to do it. All I knew was that whatever that was, I wanted to be a part of it. And so yeah. that was, I was, you know, as you're going through high school and college, of course, people are always trying to lead you towards something yeah. else, something more practical. So teachers would tell me that I should be an attorney or a surgeon or whatever. And But I always was like, no, no, I'm, I'm going to make movies. I want to make movies. So. so you graduate in 88 from BYU. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you, are you married at this point? Did you get married right around Right before time? I uh, graduated, I Jordan River Temple. Married. You ended up with seven children. Seven children. Uh -huh. and, uh, you, but before that, you go to uh, California, right? Or right after 88, you go to Right after uh, 88, yeah. We, yeah. yeah. In 89, I believe it is, we, we packed up and went to California Los Angeles. To start making films. That's right. Yeah. Now, um, 
God's Army comes out in 2000. I know you mm -hmm. worked on another project before that. Right, Girl Crazy. Girl Crazy, okay. And you said that from that that you really hoped that, anyway, you didn't want to, uh, you wanted to be doing something important. Right, You're nothing spend trivial. That much time and, right, it's, it's you know, yeah. Had you always wanted to do a, a Mormon-based no, Is that kind of what you'd come out of BYU with. No, no, you know? not at all. In fact, I didn't. You know, it didn't occur to me until um, after the experience of Girl Crazy when I was, you know, real or thinking maybe I was going to have to give up filmmaking because it wasn't consistent with the way I wanted to live my life and the kind of father and husband I wanted to be, and uh, it's a really hard decision. And then one day I was reading through the LA Times and I saw I started to notice that there were all these films made for the black community, the Indian community, the, you know, oh. the gay community. Okay. And I and I was thinking, well, and I was frustrated because I thought, well, why why does every other community have films, but Mormons don't have films? And it just clicked, you know, it was just okay. an immediate light coming on. Yeah. And so at that point, I, I realized that I wanted to tell my faith experience, my particularly Mormon experience through film. Yeah. And uh, that's where that started. Now, for anybody that's seen this, of course, they know the characters are in right. it. But a lot yeah. of this comes from your personal experiences, either from yeah. you or yeah. what you experienced. No, very much so. I, uh, I, when I first had the concept that making films for a Mormon audience or about the Mormon experience would work, then I had to come up with a story, and so it took me a couple of shots of trying to figure out what it was, and then, uh, you know, thinking of telling the story of being a Mormon missionary, which, of course, only and a Mormon missionary really right. knows what that's right. like. Yeah. Um, but it was fascinating because I was venturing into new territory, and so I kept, you know, I wrote a few versions of the script, and it was, you know, it was what it was. Yeah. And finally, my, my wife, she read a, a ver the latest version of the script, and she said, it's good, but there's just not enough of you in it and it that made a lot of sense to me mm. and so then I went back and readdressed the entire stories and all of the characters and and put my own experiences and my own um, stories my own life stories into those characters and yeah. so people you know they think maybe that I identify most with the character that I played um, but that's not really true. I mean, the character that I played was kind of where I was at that time in my life, spiritually, but I took myself and experiences and placed them into other mm -hmm. characters. So the, the main character, um, Elder Allen, his home life is very much like what my home life oh, was. Oh, okay. Um, the experience that the um, African-American missionary talks about in Carthage as a young man, that was my experience as a young man. And so, you know, I went through and I just, um, and it made all the difference. It was like suddenly the script came alive and these people were real and and then I had a movie. You know? oh, oh, that's neat. And you were active all this time. I mean, you were yeah. active mm -hmm. and your family active. And right, So tell yeah. us about the Carthage experience. Oh, the, the Carthage experience, yeah. So when you see this this one, God's Army, there's a, there's a an experience that the the black elder recounts on the rooftop, uh, on the rooftop looking out over Los Angeles about him going to Carthage as a young man and the experience that he has there. And that was, uh, as I said, that was very much my experience. My family went, was, was And if you'd rather through. not share it for them to watch the experience, that's fine too, well, so don't, I think the, I don't think spoil the, it. The key thing <laughs> to, to um, point out is that it was a, it was a very powerful, spiritual, personal, um, connection with with God. I mean, yeah. it was something that I was in there, and I wasn't expecting it. I wasn't manufacturing anything. I was just in a certain place. My heart was open in a certain way, and um, and I felt this brush with the divine, and it was so overpowering to me that I was I was 14 years old, and I was in the Carthage jail, and I just I didn't I'd never felt anything like this before, and so I'm weeping. I mean, I'm just like <laughs> weeping and weeping, and yeah. my brother. Who's a very he's he's more uh, jaded and cynical than I was. He's just looking at me like I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> um, but at having that experience and not really knowing what it is, and it was something that I had to I had to think about when I left Mormonism because it was it was such a real and powerful and genuine experience that 
I couldn't deny that it happened. Right. But what I learned, and 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 I thought, well, how could I have had that that experience? And now, well, now it's even know a real that spiritual experience. A spiritual yeah. experience that that to me, and this is where the this is where the key was. It was to me. It told me that the church was true, that Joseph Smith was a prophet, that yeah. and that this was, you know, I should align my life with this. And so, well, any good thing in our life kind of reinforces the fact that the church is true, because otherwise, why would we have that experience? Right. Yeah. Right. And so, you know, to me, that was a, a big experience, and it informed a lot of my life because at the, after that point, I knew that the church was true, and that I, you know, so it 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 influenced everything in my life you know yeah. but um, later after after I had had my experience that we discussed you know at, during the last episode where I I knew instantly that it wasn't true and I knew it um, those were hard to you know it's like I've, they, they were experiences okay, that seemed to contradict one, one and here's another. this one yeah and so I just held that in my mind until um, afterwards I was reading a, a William James book called the varieties of religious experience that I highly recommend to people William, William James, James huh? William James <clears throat> and you know the book was a hundred and some years old but but he went and looked at and studied religious experiences across the spectrum of you know all religions eastern western all kinds of christian um, denominations and and i suddenly understood because he's talking about these genuine experiences that people have in these in these different traditions and how when they have these these brushes with the divine yeah. the only way they can the only way that they can process it is to interpret it the way that the religion has to, has taught them to right. process it, and Mormonism's really strong on this. You know, if you have a spiritual experience, it's not—it's it, not just you're making contact with God. It's no. God's telling you that the church is true, right. and we were taught to yeah. to interpret everything that way. Yeah. And so it was only later that uh, that I suddenly realized, oh, okay, so so the experience was real and it was true, but maybe my interpretation of the experience was, you know, was. Uh, in its infancy, maybe it was you know it needed to evolve, and the one of the things that that worried me, because I had had ex, ex, very deep and deep spiritual experiences in Mormonism that you know were beyond just emotional or beyond well, that comes out in this movie. Your character is so committed and so right. so intense in in his faith and right. his testimony. Yeah, and, and and when so when I had the experience of knowing that it that it wasn't true, there was a part of me that was like was worried that I would be cut off from these experiences, you know, with God. Or, yeah, 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 and and it it worried me a lot, you know, because I thought now is my life going to be filled with you know the doubt and the and the sadness of having lost this, and and then the uh, I had this remarkable experience where my wife and I were just visiting Washington DC yeah. just as on a vacation um, after the filming of Falling I believe and we went to the Lincoln Memorial which I'd never been to before mm. and uh, we, we walked up and there were other people around of course and but we we're in front of this magnificent sculpture uh, the Abraham Lincoln seated sculpture and something about that place, and, and looking at the, the words of, I believe it's the Gettysburg Address that are etched in the, in the marble or the stone all, all around. And I had this, just the surging of what I would have previously called the spirit. You know, I would have just said, that's, that's the spirit, uh, something outside of me touching me. And I recognized it, and I was surprised because... This was the strongest I had, you know, the spirit had visited yeah. me in a, in a while, and um, and I and I and that's when I finally understood that all those experiences were genuine. They were real. They were, and that they were, you know. Often I started to think of when these experiences happened. It's when I was it was when I was blessing someone. When I was, you know, putting my hands on someone's sure. head to heal them or right. comfort them or or. Um, or in prayer, or, or 
and I and I, I realize you know this being in this environment with the Lincoln sculpture and realizing that my soul was reaching towards something higher. And when I was, I suddenly realized. I realized what it was, you know, it was this, you know, it was my soul rising up and something, you know, or feeling, brushing, again, brushing the divine, brushing yeah. the... Um, but something between you and God. Thing. Right. Yeah. Right. And in this case, not proving that the church was true. Right. But putting it in the context of what you were saying with William right. James. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it didn't make me come out and think, well, now I have to become... You know, a Lincoln historian, a Lincoln or something. Or something. <laughs> right? It, it, but it uh, it made me understand that uh, that that the divine was still there, and that I still had access to it, and yeah. and that I still believed in all the virtues that uh, that make life so much more beautiful and noble and that are Christ-like and yeah yeah well I had that same thing I had given a lot of blessings and had had spiritual experiences and I guess I kind I had to deal with them too I guess in coming out and and I I really did again feel that like you did that they were relationships with God or that their experiences mm -hmm. directly between me and God had nothing to do with religion right. or with the church. It didn't necessarily prove the church true, but I would have said that then. Right. Well, of course, this proves the church is true, but it wasn't. It was just a, like you say, a brush with the divine, which is wonderful. And right. Well, yeah. obviously, when a when a Catholic, when a fourteen year old Catholic boy has a brush with the divine, he does. It does he doesn't think, well, that means Mormonism is true. <laughs> no, exactly. He might have the same experience, but he says right. no, Catholicism is true Exactly, or exactly. Oh, yeah. Interesting. And I think that's a, actually a very important thing because as I look at the Christian community and I see all this interfighting between them because everyone believes, you know, they're having genuine spiritual experiences as a Lutheran or, yeah. or as a Baptist, and they're, you know, interpreting that to mean that... The Lutheran is true. Their camp is yeah. the true camp, the camp that God approves of, and the other camp is wrong, and and, yeah. and I, I, I think that's it would be wonderful if people started to understand this that even, you know, that any human being can have this experience, yeah. and uh, yeah, and every human being has that relation has a relationship or at least a potential rela well a relationship with God, um, and maybe a, potentially a mutual relationship with God where yeah. where they actually acknowledge Him as well. Now this came out in 2000. Your experience that you talked about last time when you, and, and give us that just real briefly. You were on the bed and... Yeah, I was, it was after prayer, I was, uh, I had some things on my mind and I, I uh, had felt like I was doing everything that I could do. Not perfectly, of course, I, you know, yeah. I, I, I would fail, of course, as we all do and, and get back up again. But I felt like I was in a good place and felt like I, I wanted to know what God wanted me to do next, what my father wanted me to do next. And, and in prayer, I, uh, for the first time in, since that experience in Carthage when I was 14, which answered the question as far as I was concerned, for the first time I asked myself, what if it's all not true? And it, and that may sound like a simple question, but to actually ask it with an openness of mind, I hadn't done that in a long time because the answer it, it had been answered. Sure. But when I did it anew, is that a word anyone's used in the past hundred years? Um, anew. <laughs> when I did it anew, um, I I had a um, the only way I can describe it is people talk about hearing a voice, and I know it wasn't a physical voice, and and it, and uh, that's the only that's just trying to find words to explain it. Explain but there was a voice. communication that came from the deepest part of me, a part of me that I had never accessed before. That that, but it seemed like a very clear voice, my voice from the deepest part of me that said, "Well, of course it's not true." And it was such a shock to me yeah. that that I that that was the, it was thirty seconds before I had been a believer and thirty seconds and at that moment I knew that I I could not believe again 
I just knew that it wasn't true. I just knew it, you know. <laughs> and uh, and from that point on, that of course had ramifications that I'm still still feeling um, because at that point I knew that I that what I everything I thought about God, about religion, about my own place in the universe was um, wrong, or at least pot, most likely shattered. <laughs> yeah, and so I had to start all over again to. To figure, is there a God? Um, is there, you know, is it all? Yeah. Is it all I mean, How fantasy? far do is I back it? up? Right. That's where I and then point. what does it mean? It's like my whole livelihood's tied up in, in making films about Mormon. um, Mormonism. Mormonism. <laughs> um, um, at least about, you know, faith. Which sure. is, uh, and then what's this going to mean for my family? What's this going to mean for, you know, it, it was... Huge. You know, yeah. it was absolutely huge, and yeah. and so I just continued to try to put one foot in front of the other in my personal life and just in my business life, and just continue to till I could process it to to make sense of it all. And it was very much like a death. I think that's the. It, it was like there wasn't a joy in it. There wasn't a a relief in it. There wasn't like oh good, I don't have to pay tithing anymore nothing like that it was uh, it was absolutely like it was like a death so yeah. and undeniable yeah yeah, yeah it's something that wouldn't come back but that's a death that you didn't understand that um, it sounds like you've been sensitive to the spirit for your whole life I mean had these had a, a sense of of God and in your life. Yeah. I I, I think I had a hard time as the concept of God became formed in me. Yeah. Um, I think we talked about. I don't think. No, actually, we didn't. I remember my my Pentecostal youth because I was a, I was a very young boy. It, yeah. I think I was seven when when we were taken out of that community. Um, but at that, that was it. Was interesting. I, this is important for the show, <laughs> too. And you know what? We're out of, actually out of time, believe it or not. So I'm so thrilled that we're going to be doing a second show. <laughs> I am, and we're going to talk about these movies. And I've got questions about uh, some of your process and, and stuff. So I'm, I'm thrilled that we're going to be doing some okay. more, a second one. So, uh, where are we at? And I appreciate you coming again. And we'll see you again in the next episode. But I appreciate, and I haven't said this for a while, but. It, Trust me, you're following the gospel of Joseph Smith. Mormons are following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. See ya.